John Erickson. Stalin's War with Germany. Volume 1, The Road to Stalingrad. Volume 2, The Road to Berlin. In 1963 the American writer Cornelius Ryan, journalist and author of popular military history books such as The Longest Day, The Last Battle and A Bridge Too Far, was planning his trip to the Soviet Union to access the Kremlin archives and to interview the top military officials. As a condition, the Soviet authorities demanded that no more than one U.S. citizen was part of the trip. And it was John Erickson, then a senior lecturer at the Manchester University, who was invited as the research assistant because of his excellent Russian and knowledge of Soviet military history. This research work and the relations he developed with notorious Red Army leaders, such as Marshals Konyev and Rokossovsky, became the basis for Erickson's monumental achievement over the next decades. The two volumes of Stalin's War with Germany were produced respectively in the 1970s and 1980s. Their contribution to the historical knowledge of the Soviet-German war in the West was tremendous. It was the first comprehensive and authoritative study on the so-called Eastern Front in World War II. And it remains an indispensable reference in some aspects. Written from the Soviet perspective, it covers the entire conflict. Beginning with an overview of the situation in Soviet Union when the war began, the book goes through all of the military operations while providing extensive detail on the order of battle and command cadre. The division into volumes follows their naming. Volume 1 begins with the German invasion and ends with the Soviet counter-offensive at Stalingrad, after which the strategic initiative change sides, and Volume 2 ends with the final victory in Berlin. The Soviet-German war lasted 1,418 days. That's about the number of pages in Ericsson's two volumes put together. To relate all of the events of the most savage war in the history of mankind, in a systematical manner and in less than 2,000 pages, looked like an impossible mission. Compromise was inevitable, either by selecting operations to be detailed more than others, or to shrink down the level of description for each of them. As a result of theses choices, the book will appear oversized for a beginner audience whereas undersized for an advanced one. The sheer density of data provided will frighten the casual reader, while selective and concise information will frustrate the military expert who could have expected more detailed coverage. To appeal to one or the other audience, the book should have been either reduced by half or doubled in size. As it stands, its format is a mix between two hardly compatible approaches. You can't grasp the real picture in Stalin's war with Germany if you don't have at least some background on the Eastern Front. And you won't learn much from it if you already have a solid one. The book length just doesn't fit with its ambitions. As a comparison Colonel David Glantz's work, considered as today's worldwide reference on the Soviet-German war, dedicates approximately the same number of pages for each one of the major operations as Professor John Erickson's book does for the entire conflict. The structure is basic and follows a purely chronological pattern. There are very few digressions. The main achievement of this thoroughly researched work was to correct the standard Western perspective from the first three decades of the Cold War, which implied that the Red Army won through quantity. Hitler's mistakes and the Russian winter, and which failed to acknowledge to its full extent the heroism of the Soviet people as well as the competency of many of their leaders. A major drawback of the early editions was the complete absence of maps, which was extremely damaging and prevented full understanding of the events, if not of the overall picture. More recent editions feature some maps, although they still remain too few. Whereas the book was a precursor introducing a new, Soviet-oriented approach to the study, the over-reliance on Soviet sources is nevertheless a drawback because if many events were revealed some remained obscure. The official Soviet history in the 1960s tended to charge Stalin with all disasters, and to conceal some of the most important defeats where the Red Army leadership failed as a whole and not the head of the staff only.
In conclusion, Stalin's war with Germany should be appreciated in its proper context. Written during the Cold War era, at a time when all Western histories of the conflict in the East relied on self-serving memoirs by German generals, it was the first extensive account based on Soviet sources. It opened a large window on true historical reality despite its incompleteness and writing flaws. The best proof of its still actual value might be the statement by David Glantz that his own work is just an update of what Ericsson did decades ago.